In this video, I'm going to cover the new at state object property wrapper that was introduced in Swift UI for iOS 14. So what exactly is at state object? In order to understand state object, we first have to look at why do we need it. I have created a class over here which is called counter, which is using the observable object protocol. And if you go and check out this protocol, this protocol only applies to the classes. So that's why I have added a class over here. It only has one property called publish, which is value integer zero, and that is going to be keeping track of the counter. This is my counter view, and this particular view is going to be using this counter. So let's go ahead and use it. So I will go ahead and begin, begin with observe object var counter, and we're simply going to go ahead and initialize our class, which is counter. There we go. Now, in order for us to update the counter, in the counter view, we need some sort of a text to be displayed, and we also need a button. So I'm going to go ahead and create a V stack, so I can go ahead and add a text view, put the value of the counter, which initially will be zero because we initialized it zero on line, line number 11. And I can, now I can say simply counter dot value. Great. And in order to update the value, I'm just going to go ahead and create a button and counter value increment. Just going a little bit more descriptive so that you know that this button is inside the counter view. So counter view button. All right, so inside the counter view increment, we can simply go ahead and increment the counter, which is counter dot value plus equals to one. One other thing that you will note that in iOS 14 and in Xcode 12, I didn't really have to say self over here, which is great because it just works without even uh, using self. So it knows that what we are talking about, it knows about the context, which is really good. Okay, so this is the counter view. That is great. Now we can actually start using our con counter view inside the content view. So I'm going to go ahead and put a V stack. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a counter view. So counter view. And let's go ahead and refresh our control. Inside the VStack, I'm also going to say that this is a content view because we are inside a content view. And inside the count content view, we are displaying a count counter view. Uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit more padding to it. So it's a little bit more visible. So I'm going to add padding to the counter view. And I'm also going to change the background color to something else so that you can see the boundaries of the counter view, although it doesn't really matter but I think it's going to be helpful. Let's see if the preview works. That's great. And this V stack, again, I'm going to add some padding to it. This is inside the content view. And I'm going to go ahead and change the background color to be yellow. There we go. So you can see everything is inside the content view. Okay. So now let's go ahead and run our application and try to see that if we can increase the counter. Okay, so if I click on it, it's great. So, I mean, it does increase the counter. That is working perfectly fine. Now, let's go ahead and add another counter, but that counter will be for the content view. So, I'm going to go ahead and add something over here. Content view counter or you know, like uh, we can just put the value, I guess, over here. It doesn't really matter. So I am on this new computer and I am not comfortable with the keyboard that we are. Here we go. And here we go. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to say over here count, which by the way, doesn't exist. So I'm going to go ahead and make a count variable. This is a local state variable, private var count integer equals to zero. 
And right now this is zero. I'm gonna also add a button. Keep in mind that we are adding all of these things inside the content view. Increment content view counter, a little bit more descriptive. And now I can increment the counter, count plus equals to one. And let's go ahead and refresh our view. So what we're trying to do is that one counter is maintained by the counter view, the other counter is created and maintained by the content view. So let's go ahead and run this so that we should be able to see at least our view being updated so that it can display the counter for the content view also. You can see it's kind of slow right now. Uh, hopefully it will pick up and display all of these things. But right now it's working out to be pretty slow. Let's try it again. If it doesn't work, then we can always close Xcode and restart again. So I did have to restart Xcode. Uh, one thing to remember is that I am using Xcode 12 beta and my operating system is Mac OS Big Sur, all right? So if you want to use the state object feature that we are learning, uh, you do have to make sure that it is, uh, you're using uh, Xcode 12 beta or above. Okay, so what we have done is that we have added a, another counter, but that is a local counter for the content view, the local state. And let's go ahead and run the app and see what actually happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the app. And this is the counter view, right? The green one. So I'm gonna go ahead and increment it to, let's say five, great. Now I'm gonna to go to the content view and I will press on this button, which is increment content view counter, which is going to increment this part, which is line number 31. Interesting. So that got in incremented successfully, but look at what happened to the value of the counter view increment, which is in a child control, which is counter view. Why did it got reset to zero? Let's go ahead and increase this value to whatever, 10, and press this button, which is going to increase the content view counter local state variable from one to two. And again, it got reset it to zero. So what's going on is that whenever you change the value of the local state, which we are doing on line number 38, it redraws the whole view or re-renders the whole view again. And at that time, it also going to redraw counter view. So this means it's going to reinitialize the counter, and when it reinitializes the counter, well, the value is actually zero. So how can we maintain our state inside the counter view? And that is where the state object comes into play. So I'm just gonna replace it with state object. And now I can go ahead and run it again. And just by using the state object in iOS 14, we can see that I can go ahead and increment the counter and I can also increment the local state, which is redrawing the state, but it is keeping intact a reference to the actual value that we have, which is five, which is great because now I don't have to reinitialize it or I don't have to pass in those values. It is taken care of. This is actually a great new feature that they have implemented, which is called state object. One of the other things that you will notice about the state object is that if you are creating multiple scenes, which we do over here in a window group, we are currently creating only one scene, but you can create another scene by creating a separate counter uh, or a separate window for Mac OS, then if you are passing in the state object, since the state object is created only once, uh, it is being shared among different scenes. And I'm gonna show you that later on, but right now your focus is currently on the counter view and how we replace this from observe object to state object and now the values are actually persisted. Meaning I can go ahead and increment the counter view and I can increment the local state which redraws the counter view but keep the value intact. So this is a great feature and hopefully you will enjoy this new feature.
If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a course Swift UI declarative interfaces for any Apple device. This is a 16 plus hour course with more than 4,000 students enrolled. This is the best selling course and the best course about Swift UI. You can see that we're going to start with the very basics about building lists and navigation and then diving into advanced topics like MVVM design pattern, coffee ordering application, which is going to be consuming a JSON web API. And later on, we also dive into implementing and integrating core data with your Swift UI. And now I'm also covering Swift UI 2.0 new tools. And apart from that, we also cover Apple Stocks application, how to build a complete app in Swift UI and how to integrate with the Maps application by creating a Near Me app. This is an amazing course. This course is, I'm always updating this course to add new features. And the best way to get this course is by checking out the link in the YouTube description. So please do use the link in the YouTube description. It really helps me a lot. And uh, if you find any, any other courses that you like, then go ahead and buy those also. Uh, thank you so much for your continuous support.